Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me on my crafting adventures. Today we're going to be making a Canva walkthrough video. I'm going to be showing you how I made this design for this slate using Canva. I'll give you a walkthrough of Canva and then I'll show you step by step how I made this design. If there's anything else that you want to know or you don't feel that I covered in this video, please leave me a comment. And I will also link the video for sublimating on slate into the description box below. So I only had physical photographs rather than digital photographs. So I used my Epson to scan in the photographs onto my computer. So I just literally put them in and then I found the Epson Scan 2 app on my computer and I just literally click scan, save them all as a PNG and then they were all in my documents on my computer. So I opened up Canva, I clicked on create a design and then I did custom size and it, was, it had already saved from a custom size. So this is my landscape A4 rather than portrait. And then I'm just putting a title so I know what it is. And then on the left hand side, these are all the things that you can do in Canva. So this is templates. I don't really use this one to be honest, but these are things that are ready made for you. And then elements, you will find shapes, for example, graphics, photos, videos, backgrounds. There are so much in elements. And these are things that I've uploaded from my own computer myself. These are Canva photos that you can use and the text box. And then this is a really good feature. These are styles that go together so all the colours are well matched to be used together. These are different backgrounds. This is logos. I haven't created any logos. That's why mine's empty. So today we're going to use the upload. So I'll just click on upload media and then I'll find in my documents the photographs that I've scanned in and I'll just scan them all up to, I'll just upload them all into Canva now and I'll speed it up a little bit so I only use Canva for personal use if you're using it for commercial use you do need to check the terms and conditions so I'll just click on my first photograph and then I'm going to crop my image and then once I'm happy I just click on done and then I can flip my image so I can either flip it horizontally or in this case I can flip it vertically and then I'm just going to go ahead and crop all the rest of the photographs So when that was all done and I was happy with them, I wanted to lighten up these photographs a little bit so I just clicked on edit image and then I could have adjusted the brightness or the contrast but I wanted to add a filter. So I just went to filters, I just clicked on see all and then I just experimented with different filters. And in the end I chose the whimsical one because I just felt that it lightened up the photos really nicely and I just went ahead and did that with all of the photos. And then I just needed to crop them a little bit more in places and to arrange them so that they would all fit on together. I didn't really worry about the middle part because I knew that I was going to add the uh, shape and the text on there so I just made sure that they all looked nice together and arranged them into a nice little collage. So 
So when I was happy with that, I just clicked on elements and then I went to shapes. And then I just clicked on a square and when I clicked on it, you can see at the top, there are the two colors that are in this square, but I wanted only one color. So I just arranged, I just changed the size of it slightly. And then I went up and clicked onto the colors so that I could change them. And you'll see in a moment, it's a really good feature of Canva. If you click on the colors, it will show you your color palette. So these photographs that I've used in here, I was able to match the, the shape really, really well to the colors in the photographs. And then I just adjusted it to make it smaller so it would fit in nicely in that gap. And then I just went on to text because I knew that I wanted to add some nice text to it. And I clicked add a heading and then I typed in the saying that I wanted. And then I just clicked onto the font that was already on there because I wanted to change it. In Canva, it's actually quite a good feature. They've got all of these different fonts, but you can also search for a font by using handwriting, for example, and it will show you all the handwritten ones, the ones that look handwritten. Or you could use the corporate ones. Or there's one for display, so the big bold ones are all kept together, which is quite a nice feature. I knew that the one that I wanted was called lemon Tuesday so I just typed in lemon and waited for it to come up and then I just adjusted the size up here and then I just tried to center it into that shape making sure it was the right size When I was happy with it all, I highlighted it all together and then I clicked on group and that meant that it was all one piece now. So if I tried to make it a different size, it would all move together. If I wanted to move it in a different part on the page, then it would all be together. And then I just adjusted the size. I wanted it to overlap my slate slightly, so I just made it large enough to do that. Then I clicked on download and I wanted to save it as a PNG. I made sure that I clicked transparent background and then I downloaded it to my computer. And it just downloaded and into the bottom corner. So I just clicked on it to open it up. And I think you can print it from here. I personally don't because I like to print from GIMP because of my ICC profile, but I think you can print from here. And it also gives you extra settings so that you could change the paper type and you could change it from a standard print to a high quality print. I've never tried it like I say, but I'm sure if you adjust your settings and things, you would find that you could print from there. But what I personally tend to do is find it in my downloads folder And then once I've found the correct image, I just right click it. And then I always go on to open with GIMP. And this obviously opens up GIMP. So the sizing and everything will be exactly the same. Um, and then I click on image and I go to color management and I go to convert color profile. And this is where I put my ICC profile in there. So it's already saved in there. It just press convert. 
and then this is how I always print everything. So first of all, I go to page setup and I make sure that my margins are set to zero so that the size is fine again. And then these are my print settings. So it's set to the correct printer. And then I click on preferences and I make sure that the paper type is Epson matte and make sure the quality is high. And then I go to more options and it's on custom so when I click advanced it says no colour adjustment and that's what I want I want it to print for my ICC profiles and make sure that high speed is off and that mirror image is always on and then I just send it to the printer so I really hope that that's helped you and the video is linked in the description box for the slate and once again thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon bye guys